A couple months ago, you made a little bit of a, I want to say a hot take at the time, saying that the Bears would go 5-12. and 12. Now, what's actually kind of interesting is you first started with Titans win, or uh, win over the Titans, loss over the Houston Texans, and then a win over the Colts. So far, it's win, loss, loss. So they're actually doing worse than you've predicted so yeah. far. So I want to know, how do you feel about your 5-12 and 12 prediction so far through three weeks? I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, maybe I was too generous. Maybe they're going to be four and thirteen now. Wow! Yeah, I, I looked at the uh, at the, the remaining schedule, and uh, as you pointed out, they did win their opener, but it was against Tennessee, and Tennessee is just awful. Uh, Houston, they played them tough. Uh, they lost nineteen to thirteen, and the Colts, uh, you know, they 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 were in that game too, twenty one sixteen. So the games have been uh, close. And they won one of them. And ran, the defense is ranked eight. That's good. They've given up uh, 286, almost 287 yards a game. They've given up six TDs. Uh, you compare that to the Steelers, who are number one. They've given up uh, 230 yards a game. And they've only given up two TDs, man. They look, they are, they're looking great. Uh, the uh, Bears' power ranking is number 24. They dropped a notch. They were 23 the week before. Uh you know, I think there'd be a lot less pressure on Williams if uh, the if the Bears had a running game, but they don't. They seem to be getting. Uh, he seems to be getting more comfortable each week. Uh, still, too many costly mistakes, though. The pass protection remains an issue. Williams' pocket feel, his decision making, have a lot of room for improvement. And the offensive coordinator Shane Waldron, uh, he still seems to be finding his way. There's a lot of injuries on offense. So you look at all, you put all that uh, together here. And uh, you look at the uh, remaining schedule and the power rankings of those teams that they're going to be playing the way they are right now. And the Colts will rank number 18 power ranking, and they lost to them. The Rams are number 19. Uh, that, I think that will be a close game. They may have a shot in that game, but I don't think they're going to win that one. Uh, the Panthers, they're ranked number 31, but now they found life with Andy Dalton. And uh, I think that the they I don't think they'll win that game. Actually, I think the Panthers are going to go on some sort of run here and win some games. The Commanders, uh, I think they have a shot in that game. Uh, Jaden Daniels is looking like he's a winner and uh, and a good player. Uh, but uh, the Commanders have a lot of other issues. I think they'll find a way to win that game. I think they'll also beat the Cardinals and I think they'll beat the Patriots. But that's it. As I said before, very early on before we did, had anything. They're going to lose out the rest of the season, and I think that's still what's going to happen because the Packers are ranked number seven, the Vikings are ranked number three, the Lions are ranked number four, the 49ers are ranked 12, and I think they'll move up once they get healthy. The Vikings are ranked number three, the Lions, again, ranked four, the Seahawks are ranked 11th, and the Packers, again, at the end, seven. Those teams are much stronger than the Bears, who are ranked 24 right now. Unless Caleb Williams finds a way to... Uh, be a world beater out there and maybe it's possible i mean he played a lot better uh this this week uh, his quarterback rating was 81 his qbr through three weeks though was 26.5 uh, just remember justin fields his qbr is 40 47 so you said goodbye to him for a six round pick uh the steelers are undefeated and and uh, justin fields has been playing great football yes. so don't yeah. forget that uh, Jaden Daniels, uh, the other uh, rookie quarterbacks uh, uh, ranked, uh, he's 48, and, and Bo Nix, 53. Not bad, Bo Nix. He's improving. Yeah. <laughs> Malik, Malik Willis, yeah, no. ranked number one at 89. But he's That's only played crazy. two games. That's, That's crazy, crazy, right? Josh Allen, number three at 85. Uh, you know, the QBR, I like that ranking. I it's like zero it. to 100, and it's an ESPN me, thing that I, also puts in defenses I like and it because and it, like it, that, yeah. it measures each play's degree of success yeah. and how much the credit the quarterback deserves for that play. It takes into account the strength of the opposing defense face. So yeah. I like it a lot better than the passing rating. Well, the passing okay. rating is like attempts, completions, interceptions, touchdowns. It's very statistical based. ESPN is kind of yeah. a little bit subjective, but I, I do think. It does a pretty good job normally. Yeah, I think that Williams did make a big step in this game, even though he had two interceptions. He had a bunch of passes that were overthrown. I think you've got some examples of it here. Watch this. These are all deep passes. Look at this. That one is a mile away. That's a mile off. Well, who is he throwing that to? Look at this one. Uh, a couple of these. He's got plenty of time. 
That, that one, I, I, I miscommunication, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't and this know. one, late in the second quarter, yeah. tried to get it in there. Yeah. Not, not yeah, really that no, great. Not even close. Yeah. So, I, I think the, you know, he's got a sack problem, too. Uh, you know, he gets sacked quite a bit. His turnovers are way too high. Um, the run game doesn't offer any much support for him. He has good receivers. Moore, Odunze, and uh, Kem- Kemet. Uh, and uh, so... If he if he can really get it going, then maybe they'll win a few more games. But they've got a tough schedule, particularly in the second half of the year. I'm sticking by my uh, five and twelve. I, I, my uh, what I said. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll wait. Right now, week six versus the Jaguars. Who wins that game? Bears or Jaguars? Uh, the Jaguars. I because it goes Rams, Panthers, Jaguars, bye week, Commanders, Cardinals, oh. Patriots. There's a chance the Bears could win that one. I, I that would get them to. That I, I, would get them I, I, I to need five. to know definite though. That so Rams. Get, that would get them to five next week. They aren't going to beat the Rams. So that's a loss. Though. I don't think they're going to beat the Panthers. That's a change. You had them beating the Panthers before. Yeah, but now the Panthers have found new life. With right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. Next, Jaguars. Who wins? Trevor Lawrence looks terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's be honest. I think that the uh, who, where are they playing the game? Uh, that is versus the Jaguars at all. I think the Jaguars are going to win that one. Okay, so that, that remains the same. Commanders. Yeah. Commanders, I think they win. The uh, Commanders win or Bears win? The Bears. Okay, Bears win. And then Cardinals? I think the Bears win that one. Okay, that's a change. Yeah. And then the Patriots, you have them Patriots win. Patriots okay. have them winning. So that's, that's interesting. Okay. But don't you agree? The Packers, Vikings, no. Lions, 49ers, Vikings, Lions, Seahawks, and Packers? No, I'll Those teams are all very strong teams. No, no, no. I, Even I Malik Willis is winning. Right, right, right. But the Packers are, are winning with Malik Willis. And, and that's incredible. When we came into the season, I think it's rightfully so to look at the Vikings and say they have Sam Darnold because Sam Darnold's history at that moment was bounce around quarterback, seeing ghosts in New York, complete bust. Uh, yes. And now if we look at it, saying that, oh, yeah, the Vikings are now just a pushover, the, the Bears have a shot. When you look at the two teams and how they perform, no. Brian Flores has done an incredible job with the Vikings defense. They have shut down the 49ers. They've shut completely shut down the 49ers. They made the Texans look pedestrian. Yeah. Seven points allowed with Tank Dell, Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz. So the Vikings are no longer a pushover team. What Matt LaFleur has done for Malik Willis, I well, mean... Matt LaFleur is an excellent coach. 100%. He's an incredible coach because Malik Willis was literally a pushover. He got it for a seventh round his, pick. Even his passing was good last this no, the past he was week. Playing incre- he was playing absolutely incredible. That's because they had the run game going. you got to have I the, the passing game to work. You need a running game. I completely agree. But I want to... Let's be honest here. We thought... At least some people, uh, we both thought and everybody thought that the weapons were incredible. That is indisputable when you look at Romo Dunze and coming into the NFL, what his potential was. Keenan Allen, what he could be, although he's been banged up. Cole Komet, a very good tight end. DeAndre Swift have a, had a pretty good year with, with Philadelphia. DJ Moore, 1,000-yard receiver basically every season. It looked like a good team. But there was one glaring hole that I mentioned that I got ridiculed for. The offensive line is young and not that great. And what's the massive problem with the with the Chicago Bears? The, the offensive, offensive line, line is not that great. Yeah, look at the sacks they're giving up. Right. Caleb Williams does not have a lot of time. And in this game, albeit, he was only pressured on 23% of his dropbacks. But in the course of the entire season, he hasn't had much time to throw. But I think another massive problem here, and I think it's the biggest problem, is the offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron. He is a massive liability to this team. Because we heard uh, on Radio Row, JSN talking about it when Shane Waldron got hired by the Chicago Bears, and he did not have a a high recommendation and and a high approval rating of Shane Waldron. He was actually kind of radio silent when asked the question about the signing. So Shane Waldron doesn't draw up great plays. Running schemes are not that great. And I just think all around... The offensive line, I think, is the is the the major flaw of this team because the defense is the reason why they beat the Titans. There's a very good shot if if Will Levis doesn't you know if if he uses his brain and doesn't throw it backwards essentially and throw a bad interception. Yeah. 
Yeah. He had a pick six in that game. Yeah. Will Levis. It, it was a horrible throw to the left and side when he's falling down. That was the difference in the down. game. It was 24-17. The right. pick six was the difference. Right. So the defense is completely fine. The defense will do what it is. And, and uh, let's also add this. The Colts were giving you the game. Anthony Richardson also has been like the second worst quarterback, and I think at this point, among active starting quarterbacks, is the worst because Bryce Young right now is benched. Anthony Richardson is the worst quarterback in the NFL right now. Bryce Strong is benched. Anthony, it, it, it's just Anthony Richardson's that he has a horrible completion percentage. He's tar- he has the most interceptions in the NFL. The Colts were giving you the game. And you couldn't take it. Because late in the game, things got pretty bad for Caleb Williams. Pressure was getting to him. He wasn't able to complete a lot of pass. Like, it did not look that great. Shane Waldron, I think, is on a fire seat right now. I think that if it keeps going like the way it is, I think three things will happen. Shane Waldron gets fired, Matt Eberflus gets fired, and they draft a lot of offensive linemen in the upcoming draft, which mm-hmm. they should already do because this is just embarrassing. Mm-hmm. I think Eberflus is not a very good coach. And also, what did I say going into the season? DeAndre Swift was okay, okay yeah. with the Lions, really good with the Eagles. What was the massive problem? Lions had an offensive okay offensive line. line. Offensive Eagles line. Eagles had a top three offensive line. The Bears had a bottom ten offensive line. So I said entering this year, DeAndre mm-hmm. Swift will be as good as the offensive line that he has, which right now yeah. is bottom of the barrel. And I'd say Caleb Williams, uh, he he does show that he's improving, but uh, to beat up on the Colts, you know, uh, and uh, get 363 yards against them. I want to see a few more games before I say he's on his way to, to stardom. Oh, and that's another thing, too. The Colts. How the hell don't you run well against the Colts? They just got obliterated. They got run against. Let's, I want to make sure I get the number correct when it comes to the Colts. They gave up 261 rushing yards against the Green Bay Packers. That was Malik uh, Willis's first start. And in this game, you, uh, you run it 28 times for 63 yards, 2.3 yards a carry. And what's worse is... With 55 non-quarterback rushing yards on 27 carries. That's 1.5 yards per uh, run. 5.1 yards. And this is this is one of the worst rush defenses in the NFL, the yeah. Indianapolis Colts. And Anthony Richardson was giving you the ball. Anthony Richardson plays like it's Madden. Just deep bombs away, trying to get one-play touchdowns all the time. They were gifting you this game and couldn't get it done. That's on bad offensive line. That's bad play calling. That's bad coaching. Caleb Williams, and th- that's the good thing. It's not like week one where they couldn't complete a pass. Now, completion percentage definitely needs to be improved on. But he's improving. He's getting more yards. He's getting he's, he's looking better, seeing the field a little bit better. How many games do you think they'll win? I think you had him at seven games. I had him at seven think. games. Yeah. If Bryce Young was out there, I think definitely they would beat the Panthers. My yeah. concern is the D, the secondary of the Rams is one of the worst in the NFL. Also, the offensive line is also a Rams abysmal. just beat the 49ers. I understand, but that was such a weird game. Such a, such a weird game. But they did beat the 49ers. I think so. Jacksonville, they have an opportunity to beat Jacksonville because the, the Jaguars can't score. They average under 15 points a game. Like mm-hmm. like It's very, very bad. I, I honestly think your commander's pick of them being the command. I think that's well up in the air. The, uh, they okay. have the worst secondary and outscored Joe Burrow. Jaden Daniels, I think, had 92% completion well, percentage. Maybe the Bengals are terrible. I think no. that, that's, a, that's a decent shot of being the case. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.